Two. Madam Secretary, would you read the board rules? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Please silence all cell phones. If you wish to speak, please let the board secretary know in advance. Otherwise, raise your hand for the board chair to recognize your request. When the chairman calls you to speak, come to the podium, adjust the microphone, and then state your name and address for the record. You are requested to keep your remarks brief and factual. Both parties of an issue will be granted uniform maximum time to speak, and this usually runs between three to five minutes. This hearing is considered quasi-judicial, conduct is formal, and profane or derogatory comments will not be tolerated. Madam Secretary, do we have a quorum? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, with five members present, we do. Do you have proof of publication of notification of this meeting? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. It was published on September 22nd, 2022 in the Escambia County Sun Press. Now we'll, I'll accept, entertain a motion to approve the minutes. There are no minutes from the last meeting being uploaded. They will be at your, on your next agenda. However, there's a recording of the meeting available at myescambia.com. You want to postpone it to the next meeting? Yeah, they'll be uploaded to your next agenda. Okay. Move on to public forum. At this time, we have the opportunity for public to be appear before the board on any subject that's not on the agenda. Do we have any takers? Mr. Chairman, I received no speaker request forms. Very good. We'll move forward to board secretary status report. Mr. Chairman, at this time, I'm gonna to have to ask for an additional meeting date on either Friday, October 21st or Monday, October 24th. October 21st. Let's check I, you said Friday the 21st? It'll be Friday, October the 21st, or Monday, October the 24th. Keep in mind, we already have our scheduled meeting on October 5th. We have a special session on October 11th. So this will be another meeting in October. I'll be out of town. On the 25th? Yeah, I'll be out of town. For the 25th? And both of them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. How about you? I won't be able to attend weekly meetings. Okay. Yeah, my, I can't get my work done. And get Alton, <laughs> can you make it the 21st or the 25th of October for another meeting? It will be October 24th, sir. 24th? I'll do my very best. Okay. Randy Kent, will you? That's two, three. You'll be out of town. Be uh, there only be four. We would not have a quorum. So okay. can the board put forth a date that you all can make it? What's happening is we have so many cases, and there is an urging for expediency. And so the cases that you hear today, I need a date for them to go to disciplinary. What about the How about us entertaining it at the end of this meeting? So it won't take up. We cannot do them same day. Notice has to be done. No, I said. <laughs> We'll entertain what date oh, do you after wanna... this meeting's over to discuss when we can do it. Yes, sir. That's good. Okay. Thank you. Good deal. Do you have anything else? Um, I can, yes. I can give you an update. That's what Christy is asking. Can I give you an update on hearings and possibilities? Um, it's easiest if I just bring up our spreadsheet. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just want to get, I just want the board to be made aware of the numbers that we still have out in front of us and we're trying to get all these items taken care of before we get into the holiday season so that everyone, including, you know, everyone that's been dealing with this in their personal lives and, and, and the board, so they can all go ahead and plan for their holidays and not have to think about coming in here and talking with us and, and handling cases in front of us so that we don't put any more on their holidays. Um, they, they're all, they've all been under a lot of stress and we'd like to move them along. So she's going to give us a number at the end of the meeting when we're working our calendars. That's why I'm asking. And that would include all probable cause hearings and all uh, disciplinary hearings remaining. If that's okay with you. All those that are in color. So I brought up our spreadsheet. This is a spreadsheet of minor Melissa's that we've been utilizing. As you can see, these are cases from the very beginning. Um, 
the ones in green are disciplinary hearings set for the 5th. The ones in the light purple are disciplinary hearings set for the 11th. As you see, the pink are the items that are coming before you today, and I need to be able to set them for a date. These are public uh, probable cause in the teal. So these are just getting started. These are also probable cause for the 11th in the orange. And then we have 17 additional cases as of last Friday. And we received two more yesterday. These cases just, they, um, as more, as it progresses, we, we just keep getting more cases in. Uh, we understand. Um, I, if we can expedite the public today, right now, and then after the meeting, we can discuss it. I just don't want to hold it to time. After the public is, right. yes, sir. Yes, we don't have please. a problem with that. They, they're welcome to hang around if they want, but I imagine they'll be glad to, to move on with their cases today. Thank you. that all? Yes, sir. So, um, we'll Chairman move Matthews. into item seven. Chairman Matthews, just so you know, last time we were here, we, um, we changed how we did this a little bit to expedite it. Um, so um, what, we, what we do is we, if you want to just, if you want me to just run with it, but I started asking the questions so that we can move some of these cases along and introducing evidence. Um, if you don't like the, if we could try it and if you're satisfied with that, um, the board seemed to work just fine with it. If, if you're comfortable with that, I'll handle the questioning and, and moving the items into evidence. Fine with me. Thank you, Chairman. Get us out of here fast. Uh, well, I'll do my best. Um, the first uh, item number seven on the, on the agenda are the probable cause hearings. Item number seven, one, Matthew S. Banks doing business as Banks Construction LLC, state registered license number RR2828. 12001 CCB complaint number 2208103COM regarding Carrie Riggs, homeowner complainant, 5780 San Gabriel Drive, Pensacola, Florida, 32504. Is Ms. Riggs present? Is there anyone else with you that would like to speak today? Okay, would you mind coming up to the front row here, both of you, if that's okay? Is the defendant present? Matthew Banks, for the record, I've sounded the room and Matthew Banks is not present. And if you wouldn't mind just getting sworn in, then you can have a seat. If you'll just have a seat in the front row, we'll call you in just a moment. If you would also swear, swear in our investigator, Ms. Reber. You saw Ms. where the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I swear. Thank you. Ms. Reber, could you please state, um, tell us if you conducted, um, did, if you received a complaint in the before listed case? Yes, I did. And in that complaint, did you collect any documents? Yes, I did. And what documents did you collect? Collected a complaint, signed complaint form, a contract between the parties, proof of payment, communication between the parties, a bill for un, unpaid subcontractor, a demand letter, and proof of payment to that subcontractor. And if we could just take a moment to flip through those on the screen so that screen will be up before the board as well as um, before the public. And if you could tell the board what they're looking at as she flips through them. Um, this is the complaint form received by the Riggs. The contract between the parties. Proof of payment. And variety of communications between the parties. Do you know how much the total payment was in this case? Um, they paid a deposit of $22,820. And that's one payment. You know, they paid an additional payment for flooring, $1,250. 
and that does not include the payment to the subcontractor for $1,660. All right. Um, after you reviewed these documents, did you review to see if any permits have been pulled? Yes, I did. Did you find any permits? Um, there was a permit issued on June 7th, 2022 for a master bedroom and bath renovation with a plumbing rough in, which passed the plumbing rough in on August 17th, 2022. Any additional permits? No. All right. And did you check uh, the contract to see if there had been any information regarding the homeowner recovery fund? There was not. All right. And did you speak with the homeowner? I did. All right, and were they able to provide additional information to you? Um, other than the documentation? No, their okay. documentation was sufficient. Okay. Mr. Chairman, we'd ask that these items be moved into evidence, the ones that she's discussed, as well as her investigative report, which she'll be testifying from. Entertain a motion. So moved. moved. Motion's made to move the documents into evidence. Second. Is there a second? Second. Motion made second in the discussion. Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Oppose like sign. Being none, the motion is approved. Thank you. If you could, um, Ms. Reber, could you tell us which, um, as you reviewed the documents and the information that you received from the rigs, what um, violations did you determine had been had occurred based on the facts that were in front of you? Code section 1837C6, financial mismanagement or misconduct in the practice of contracting that causes financial harm to a customer. Code section 1837C7, termination of a construction project in which the contractor is engaged or under contract to shall be considered to have been abandoned after 90 days if the contractor terminates said project without notification to the prospective owner and without just cause for such abandonment. Code section 1837C11, finding that a contractor is guilty of fraud or deceit or gross negligence, incompetency, or misconduct in the practice, practice of contracting. Florida Statute 489-126-2A, apply for permits necessary to do work within 30 days after the date payment is made, except where the work does not require a permit under the applicable codes and ordinances. Code section 1837-9J, failure to notify residential property owner of recovery fund, Florida Statute 489-126-2A as amended. Um, as far as the violation of Florida Statute 489-126, apply for permits necessary to do work within 30 days, what, was the vi what are the facts behind that violation? Um, the property owners signed the contract, sorry, uh, signed the contract on October 22nd, 2021, and a permit was not pulled until June 7th, 2022. And uh, on that same day, they issued a 50% per, 50 deposit, 22,820. All right, and as far as the, um The, con the termination of a construction project. When was, do you have a date from when the construction po project was terminated? Or an estimate? Let's see. I, d I don't have that exact date. Okay, thank you. If we could call the rigs. Please step to the podium and make sure you state your name. You've already been sworn in. Um, my name is Carrie Riggs. Uh -huh. Robert Riggs. Right. You've heard the questions that we that have been asked to the investigator. The documents that you've seen up on the board, are those the documents you supplied to her? Yes. And those are documents that um, went between you and the um, defendant yes. banks? Yes. Okay. Do you know what date he basically stopped showing up or terminated the contract? There were so many. Um, I think the last time he was in our home was June 5th. And you haven't seen him since, and there's been no work since then? Correct. And I believe he um, did foundation work in our home, uh, breaking the foundation in our home in end of March, and that still remains to this day. 
Okay. And I see that you also had um, Extreme Plumbing came out. Is that correct? Correct. Um, Matthew Banks, our banks constructed and contracted with them. They did some work in the home. Um, and then we received uh, a notice of a bill and potential lien on our property. So we reached out to Extreme Plumbing after reaching out to Banks Construction with no response um, to resolve the issue so there would not be a lien on our home. Okay, so it, so you ended up paying that bill yourself? Correct. Okay. And that was in the con within the contract that you had contracted with Banks. He should have covered that cost? Correct. All right. And How? that was Extreme Plumbing's understanding as well. I'm sorry? That was Extreme Plumbing's understanding as well. That okay. Banks Construction covered. Do you know uh, approximately, and I may have already asked you that, I see there's several emails between the two of you. Yes. Can you tell us um, approximately um, how much restitution at this time, you, that um, based on your expenditures, can you tell us how much restitution is due, or are you ready for that, to provide that number? I think we've calculated it. Um, my husband's pulling it up right now. Okay. Can you, um, I know that there was, the project concerns, there was a long list that you sent out of the project concerns. Yeah. Um, they, it looks like they started October 26th of 2021 and extended through December 14th of 2021. I'm sure there was others because there's a bunch of emails after that. I'm just talking about your initial list. Oh, yes. Okay. Um, and your concerns were, um, there's a person by the name of Danny. Correct. There was actually two project managers, two separate people, both of whom were named Danny. <laughs> um, and we were working with uh, one, Danny, uh, and continually had miscommunication, misunderstanding, scheduling of things, people not showing up for schedulings. We brought those concerns to um, Matthew Banks. Uh, he gave us another project manager, also by the name of Danny. His name was Donnie. Oh, First Donnie. person's name was Danny Gay. Excuse okay. me. Okay. Yeah. So we coordinated with them. He actually ended up quitting Banks Construction. And then we were told to speak directly with Matthew Banks via Builder app um, to ensure appropriate communication. And so that's from that point forward, that's where and how we communicated with them. You said that you communicated with Matthew Banks via Builder app? Yes. Tell us about that app. So Builder Trend is something they required us to download to um, upload documents, pictures, um, contracts, payments. Um, it was also supposed to have a calendar that told us the work that was going to be scheduled and arranged. Um, it was also a way to be able to message the team to understand when there was uh, scheduling conflicts or something like this. So um, we didn't have much success with Builder Trend and so started emailing directly and texting or calling. Um, and then at, again, one point he was, uh, he mentioned to us via text that um, to ensure that we would have more appropriate prompt attention to use the Builder Trend app to this messaging system, which we did. Um, and most of the communication from that point forward was just from his team weekly emailing us that they're awaiting an electrician to come. Um, okay. But they couldn't tell us whom or when or how. So when you brought all those concerns to him uh, through the app or through text messaging, was any of it corrected? No. I think they would rise to the occasion for a moment, um, I think probably to extend the process, um, but ultimately the issues were never resolved. Um, we tried to extend a lot of grace because we understood we started before a holiday season. Um, and so even though things were supposed to be finished before the holidays, again, we understand we are also humans that want to celebrate holidays and so extended that a little further um, and continually we're trying to be faithful and hopeful that he would fix it. He stood in my home in the hole on our house in 6-5 and told me he would fix it. But he didn't. Right. Did you come up with, do you have a restitution amount? Uh, we don't have a number at this time. Okay, that's fine. We can get that from you later. Sure. Is there anything else that you want to tell the board that you hope for them to know? Uh, we, we will be seeking restitution. Um, we hope that other people in the community don't have to go through this. Thank you. If the board has any questions for the witnesses? You don't have a list of restitution for the amount yet? Not at this time. We'll have it for the disciplinary hearing if the, if the board finds probable cause. Okay. Okay. And we'll have Melissa Reba work with you to come up with a number on that restitution. Okay? Thank you. Thank you very much. If you want to have a seat, you're welcome to have a seat. Okay. Uh, that's um, 
with these items moves, moved into evidence and the testimony that's before you today, that's the um, the county's case, uh, the board's case regarding Matthew Banks in this in the uh, um, for the rigs. Yeah. I'll make a motion. We move to uh, disciplinary hearing based on the alleged violations in the report presented. Second. Any discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion passes. Move to disciplinary hearing in accordance with the alleged violations in the documentation. The next case before the board is um, 7.2 or 7.2. The case is Matthew S. Banks doing business as Banks Construction LLC. State Registered License RR 28281201, CC, CCB Complaint Number 220813. One, mm -hmm. Nikki Whitfield, homeowner, 8865 Saltgrass Drive, Pensacola, Florida, 325226. Is, um, is Nikki Whitfield present? Uh, Nikki was unable to be here. I'm the cousin of John Whitfield. John Whitfield, okay. Um, I, I wanted to make sure notice did go out to Mr. Banks. Yes. Okay. Um, Mr. Banks, we've already sounded the room. I don't see that he's come in. We can sound the room again. Matthew Banks, still not present. Any other w interested witnesses by yourself, Mr. Whitfield? No, just myself. Okay. Um, if you would do me a favor and stand up and be sworn in. Yep. You can stand right there. You're close enough to the front. These songs for the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. Thank you. And if you could go ahead and swear in, Ms. Reaver. Do songs for the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I swear. Thank you. Ms. Reaver, did you have an opportunity to conduct um, an investigation? Yes, um, I did. <laughs> regarding the above listed case? I did. All right. And um, what type of documents did you take into your custody? Received a complaint form, a copy of the contract between the parties, proof of payment, communication between the parties, demand letter, the complaint filed with the Department of Ag, proof that the Whitfields have been listed as claimants in bankruptcy for the banks, for banks, and uh, a Whitfield statement to the board. Did you um, check to see if any permits had been pulled in the um, Whitfield case? Yes, I did. There were no permits pulled. All right. Um, and it was work that required a permit to be pulled? Yes, it would have. All right. And um, did you, was there any language in the contract regarding the homeowner recovery fund? No, there was not. All right. Did you have an opportunity to speak with the Whitfields? I spoke with Mrs. Whitfield. When, um, were there any other documents as the full, it seems like there was some communications also, is that correct? Between the parties? Yes, there was. Okay. I know that Ms. Whitfield is not here today, but it appears that she has a statement for the board. She sent in a statement for the board, is that correct? That's yes. I, oh, I'm sorry. Thank you so much. I apologize. Um, Mr. Whitfield, if you want to come forward. Right. This. Do you recognize this statement that's, well, I apologize. This statement that was on... Does he need to state his name and address? Oh, Whatever. I apologize. Yeah, my name is John Whitfield. I'm at 8865 Saltgrass Drive, Pensacola, Florida. All right, and do you and recognize this piece of paper? I mean, this letter that's on, up do. before the board? I do. All right, and can you tell the board what that is? Uh, that is uh, uh, my, my wife's statement on uh, the uh, events that occurred. Uh, with Matthew Banks and Banks Construction. 
Um, and it's accurate uh, it about the events that occurred? It is accurate. Okay. Um, Mr. Chairman, we ask that these items that have been listed at, um, uh, along with the complaint and the investigative report that's done by, um, that's been done by Ms. Reaver be introduced as evidence. Make a motion, we make, uh, move those into evidence. You have a second? <coughs> second. Motion made and second. Any discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. The motion to enter all the documentation presented into evidence is approved. And we're gonna take a quick, uh, quick statement from Ms. Reaver, and then um, if you wanna stay right there, that'll be fine. If you have more information <coughs> to provide to us. Okay. Okay. Mr. Uh, Investigator Reber, could you please um, tell the board uh, what, based on the f documents and the information that you received from the homeowners um, and your review of the permit, the permitting system, as well as the requirement of the homeowner recovery fund, um, can you please tell the board the item, the allegations that you were able to find? Alleged violations of Code Section 1837C7, termination of a construction project in which the contractor is engaged or under contract to shall be considered to have been abandoned after 90 days. If the contractor terminates said project without notification to the prospective owner and without just cause for such abandonment. Code Section 1837C11, Finding that a contractor is guilty of fraud or deceit or gross negligence, incompetency, or misconduct in the practice of contracting. Florida Statute 489-126-2, apply for permits necessary to do work within 30 days after the date payment is made, except where the work does not require a permit under the applicable codes and ordinances. Code Section 1837-9J, Failure to notify residential property owner of recovery fund, Florida Statute 489-126-2A as amended. We Chair. Ready for, ready for a motion? Go ahead. Just a second. Wait. That should read Florida Statute 489-126-2A1 and code section 1837-D9J. So there's corrections to the allegations. I would say a typo. Okay. So that's on, um, what was the first correction? Florida Statute 489-126-2A. It should have a 1. 2A1. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Code Section 1837, it should be D9J. Um, we just want to give Mr. Whitfield an opportunity. I know that your wife um, provided that communication and she wanted you to read that into the record. Uh, yes, I actually have my own statement, so okay. we'll, we'll use hers. But Whatever you're comfortable with, this one is already in evidence and before the board. Okay, and this will be brief. Uh, but along with others, my wife and I, obviously one of the many uh, within the community that has experienced a financial loss due to improprieties of Matt bank Banks. Uh, this is a little bit redundant, but on February 4th, Matt, Matt was given a check in good faith for $17,500 for a down payment for a kitchen renovation, which he required to begin the project. And after, after nearly six months of Matt slow walking and pushing the start date, we decided to go to his place of business to address the matter and hopefully firm up a start date. We were shocked to discover that there was no one at the facility and it appeared to be abandoned. I also inquired with a couple of the businesses next door uh, who really presented to me that he had essentially had gone out of business. Subsequently, on July 26, we sent a certified letter to Banks Construction re requesting a refund of our money for failure to begin the project on time and for his failure to pull the permits for the project. The letter was received at his place of business, and we have since not received any communication from Matt Banks or any representative of Banks Construction. Along with a certified letter, we continued to uh, attempt to contact him uh, via phone, but with no response. So today I'm formally requesting that the board approve an official order of restitution from uh, Matt Banks. It is my belief that because of the sheer number of victims involved, 
the hundreds of thousands of dollars lost by creditors, suppliers, and even employees and others. This is not simply a situation of being overextended, but rather a systematic method to defraud the citizens of Escambia County. It is my hope that, the ju that justice will be served for these improprieties and that in the future, the board will implement disciplined oversight, including clear and progressive accountabilities and consequences, along with concrete, predetermined follow-up measures. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. I'm what reviewing the, the, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I was curious, the amount of the restitution, is that 17.5? Correct. Thank you. That was my question, so thank you very much. Um, that, along with the documents that we put in front of the board, um, is, the, um, is the case. If the um, um, board has any questions for the witness. I don't have any. Anybody else have any questions? You got any questions? No. Move forward. I'd like to make a motion that we approve the alleged violations as corrected um, to disciplinary hearing, along with uh, the restitution request of 17. Second. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Se second. Motion made and seconded to uh, move to disciplinary hearing based on the alleged violations presented in the documentation and to provide uh, restitution in the amount presented by the homeowner. So what's going to happen now um, is they're going to vote on this and. Oh. Should they decide, this disciplinary hearing will be later. You're welcome to have a seat or you can okay. remain. We got to vote on that. Got to vote on it. Yes. It, should they vote and, and agree that it's a. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion to approve. Apologize for getting ahead of you. Thank you. Thank you. The next case before the board is 7 3, Matthew S. Banks doing business as Banks Construction LLC state registered license RR2828120001 CCB complaint number 2208129 Alice Bennett and Diana Rowland All right miss is it miss Rowland Miss Bennett all right um are you going to speak today all right. If you could just come up and have a seat up front for a moment, and if any, and if anyone wants to speak with you, they're welcome to come up front with you. Uh, the address is one zero three nine four Old Dairy Lane, Pensacola, Florida, three two five three four. Was notice sent to the defendant regarding this case? Yes, it was, Madam Secretary. Um, and uh, we'd sound the courtroom. Or we'd sound the room for Banks. He hasn't appeared. Um, and is there any other interested witnesses that will be testifying with you today? No. Thank you. Um, we'd also, so we'd ask that Ms. Reaver and Ms. Rowland be sworn in. Would you raise your right hand to be sworn, please? I'm Ms. Bennett, for the record, not Ms. Rowland. Oh, I'm so sorry. I apologize. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I swear. Thank you. I'm writing it in big letters, Bennett. so I'll get it right. Right? Did I? Yeah. I'm still getting it wrong. Miss Bennett, right? Yes. Thank you. I'm so sorry. I apologize. Miss um, Reber, you had an opportunity to conduct an investigation in this case? Yes, I did. All right. What documents did you receive? We had a, uh, I received a complaint form copy of the contract, proof of payment, and the report uh, Ms. Bennett submitted to the Department of Agriculture. Did you um, review to see if any permits had been pulled in the case? Yes, I did. All right, and were any permits pulled? No, there were not. All right, did you check the, the contract for to see if there was anything from the Homeowner Recovery Fund? There was not. Required statement? There was not. All right, and you spoke with the homeowners? I did. All right, and did they provide, um, I'm looking at the documents they provided to you. Among those was the complaint to uh, Gregory Johnson, the law enforcement investigator? That's correct. Okay. Is there any additional information that you gathered that you wanted to introduce at this time? From no, I do not. Okay. 
We'd ask that the items, including her investigative report, Ms. Reaper's investigative report, be moved into evidence at this time. Motion to move to evidence. We have a motion made. We have a second. Second. Motion made and seconded. End of discussion. Being none. All those in favor of provide, uh, providing all documentation presented as, as evidence in the case is approved. Oh, vote. you got a vote. Yeah. All those in favor say aye. Aye. You got me confused. I apologize. Opposed? Being none, all those, the motion is approved. I'll get it out, guys. I just got back from three weeks in Europe. <laughs> <laughs> um, if I could recall Ms. Reber, um, can you tell us, based on the, um, on the items that you reviewed, was there, I think I already asked you about the permits being pulled, there was none? There were no permits. Okay. And you also said that there was no language for the recovery fund? There was not. What allegations, um, based on your review of the records and the public records, um, were you, uh, did you just, did you um, find with, okay. in the paperwork? The alleged violations? Yes, ma'am. Code section 1837C7, termination of a construction project in which the contractor is engaged or under contract to shall be considered to have been abandoned after 90 days if the contractor terminates said project without notification to the prospective owner and without just cause for such abandonment. Code section 1837C11, finding that a contractor is guilty of fraud or deceit or gross negligence, incompetency, or misconduct in the practice of contracting. Florida Statute 489-126-2A1, apply for permits necessary to do work within 30 days after the date payment is made, except where the work does not require a permit under the applicable codes and ordinances. Code section 1837D9J, <laughs> Failure to notify residential property owner of recovery fund, Florida Statute 489-126-2A as amended. For the record, that's a correction, um, a typographical error, but a correction to the last uh, allegation, which is the 1837-D9J. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Okay. Um, were you able to determine, based on the records, um, when was the last contact that the Bennett, that Ms. Bennett, had contact with banks um, when he actually um, the last part of the work. the last time they made a, a payment um, okay. I believe that's on the second page of your report third paragraph are your discussions of the payments yeah July um, July 29th 2021 all right and after that July 29th, uh, 2021 meeting, is there, did you find any record to indicate there had been any further work done? No, I did not. Okay. Um, it appears that Banks went to their house on June 16th of 2022 and told them he was financially unable to begin work? That is correct. Uh -huh. I have no further questions of Ms. Weaver. If, um, Ms. Bennett would like to come forward. If you'd state your name for your, the record and your address. Alice Bennett, 10394 Old Dairy Lane, Pensacola, Florida. All right. Um, you had the opportunity to review the records that we've talked about here, the ones that were being put up on the screen. Are those your records? Yes. And that's what you provided to, uh, to the... Uh, to Ms. Reaver? Yes. For the purposes of your complaint. They're accurate? Yes. All right. The Is only there... thing I had not seen was her her report. I hadn't seen it till today. But... Okay. Um, and you're comfortable with the allegations that are in that? <clears throat> yes. They, they fit mm -hmm. your fact pattern? Yes. Okay. Um, is there anything that you want to make, make the board aware of? There's some statements you want to make to the board or you want me to ask you questions? Um, I'll let you ask me first. <laughs> okay. She made it. Um, how much money do, do you know um, how much money you actually gave banks 
Yes, we had paid him a total of $105,900. All right. He had done some work of this project prior to our last payment, which was in July. And um, we calculated that the restitution we're due is $56,080. So that work that you um, that he completed because of, um, that's you're saying that the fifty six thousand is the remainder, right? And have you been contacted? Um, have you submitted anything to the bankruptcy court? Yes. Okay, so you Same are. Same thing. Yes. You're in that procedure as well. Yes. Okay. And you are seeking restitution in this case. Yes, I am. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to tell the board? Help them understand. Um, helping them understand um, that, like many other victims we're calling ourselves um, we have feel like we're paying, playing a, a giant game of ping pong at this time I just wanted to for the record um, in addition to filing my complaint and let me first say Ms. Reaper was very helpful in that process but <clears throat> we have also worked through our local attorney in the bankruptcy filed a complaint with Greg Johnson I did a consumer complaint with the Florida Office of the Attorney General, filed a report with the Federal Trade Commission on a fraud, <coughs> and spoke for the Escambia County Commission. I last week got a formal response from the State Attorney General stating she was forwarding my complaint to the Department of Business and Professional Regulation and then two days ago, I got a written response from them saying I should contact you. So I'm back to where I started. So I hope that you all take it very serious and try to move this along. Thank you. We want you to understand we do take it serious. Absolutely. Well, I just know that, you know, I have listened to all of your recommendations about what we should do on our own, and we have done that. And they all send us back to you. So it's in your court. I know. And again, thank you, Ms. Reaper. We appreciate that you've made so much effort to reach out to all these different, um, to, to the different branches of government. It's important that they're all aware that this is, um, Yes. The, and, the seriousness and, of this incident. And, and for the record, also, Mr. Greg Johnson did send me back a written report where he assigned a case number and asked that I initial that I would testify in a criminal proceeding, and of course I said yes. So I have gotten written response from everybody, even if it was just acknowledging my complaint or what they suggested I do. So I don't feel like I've been ignored, but yet we're in this giant circle, you know, that we'd like for something to be done. Thank you. Thank you. Does the board have any other questions? All right, thank you. If you'd like to have a seat, thank you. That's the, um, that's the finality of our case here involving um, Ms. Bennett, if you would. If I'd the like board to, wants to make a decision. I'd like to make a motion to move to disciplinary hearing based on the alleged violations as corrected and the amount of restitution requested is fifty six thousand eighty dollars. Second. Motion made and second and in the discussion. Big nod. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Big nod. The motion to go to disciplinary hearing based on all the information presented and the documentation is approved. Moving on to case number seven four, which is Matthew S. Banks, state registered license, doing business as Banks Construction LLC, state registered license RR2828120001, CCB complaint number 2208108COM, Charles Cadden, Cadden, Cadden um, 2410 
Bluff Circle, Pensacola, Florida, 32503. Was notice sent, uh, Madam Secretary, was notice sent out to yes. banks? All right. Um, I'll sound the room for the defendant. Banks, <coughs> not present. Um, Mr. Cadden's present, and um, we would also, uh, Ms. Reaver's president, uh, present, if we can have them both sworn in at this time. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I swear. Thank you. Ms. Ms. Reaver, if you could turn to your investigation, did you receive a complaint in this case? Yes, I did. What other documents did you receive? There was a contract between the parties, proof of payment copy of a deck plan, correspondence between the parties, and miscellaneous media reports. As far as the permits pulled, were there any permits pulled for this project? No, there was not. And permits were required, is that correct? Yes. All right. And how about the contractor homeowner recovery fund? Were there any statements within the um, contract regarding that? No, uh, no, there was not. I, uh, one correction with regard to the permits. Um, I believe a permit was applied for, but it was never issued to banks due to non-payment. Okay. All right. And you had an opportunity to speak with Mr. Cadden? Yes, I did. All right. And was there any information offered by Mr. Cadden besides the documents that were supplied? Um, I just recapped what he provided to me. All right. Nothing additional. Mr. Chairman, at this time we'd ask that these exhibits be moved into evidence um, along with the investigative report that was prepared by Ms. Reaver. Uh, motion to admit into evidence the information provided. Motion made, sir. Second. Second. Motion made and second. The end of the discussion. Being not. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Motion's approved to enter all documentation presented into evidence in this case. Ms. Reber, based on the items that you reviewed, the docs that, you, that were gathered, the public permitting records and uh, statements made on the owner, were you able to reach a determination as to what allegations should be, um, violations should be alleged against Mr. Banks? Yes. And what were those violations? Code section 1837C7 termination of a construction project in which the contractor is engaged or under contract to shall be considered to have been abandoned after 90 days if the contractor <coughs> terminates said project without notification to the prospective owner and without just cause for such abandonment. Code section 1837C11, finding that a contractor is guilty of fraud or deceit or gross negligence, incompetency, or misconduct in the practice of contracting. Florida Statute 489-2A-1. 126. 126, I'm sorry, so correction. 2A-1. I apologize, each one of these is, needs a correction. Apply for permits necessary to do work within 30 days after the date payment is made, except where the work does not require a permit under applicable codes and ordinances. Code section 1837D9J, failure to notify residential property owner of recovery fund, Florida statute 489-126-2A as amended. Based on your investigation, did you find any information about how long, when was the last time that anyone from banks even had contact with Mr. Cadden? Yes. Um, May 5th of 2022. And that's the last time anyone worked on the project? That's correct. Okay. Um, Do you know if any funds were ever refunded by the defendant? They were not. All right. I have no other questions for you. Mr. Cadden, would you like to come forward and make any statements? All right, come on up. Charles John Cadden, 2410 Bluff Circle, Pensacola, within the city. Uh, just a, a quick correction. Okay. May, the May date is the last date that any contractor was on site 
correspondence between uh, banks and ourself continued through July, where we were promised restart dates, but um, hollow promises. They never actually, anybody ever came out and we'd get these you know, responses to email. Oh, we're working on scheduling a, uh, the, yep. the foundation guy was the magic words that they were delaying them, apparently. I noticed there's a number of communications between, um, I believe this might be, is this you? It looks like between you and a Raven Kendrick? Yes. Okay, and um, let's talk about those communications. Well, um, is, this is by Gmail, or your Gmail account. Is that right? Email and uh, the Builders Trend uh, software application. Okay, so you were also asked to use the software application? Yes, I was. All right. Did you find that um, it was easy to use? It was e easy to use, but it was never accurate or updated. Okay. Uh, it, they never put an initial schedule in, even though. The contract specified a start date and a completion date. It was well into the past the start time before they even put the scheduling in, in on the uh, thing. And I think, if I recall right, that was after a meeting I had with banks in person saying, you know, look, it's, it's not even reflected in your software. So, it's, it's a beautiful program, but from their end, they weren't using it. So you would have, you had communications with banks and subsequently he should have responded to you using that program? Yes. Or someone from his company based on your conversations? Yes. And they did not? They did, did not, or okay. they, and in some cases they did, depending on, on who I addressed it to, but it, it wasn't reliable or accurate communications. So how much work was actually done on your project? The uh, only work was done was between uh, April 25th and May 5th. They removed a section of uh, existing patio uh, foundation. The, a subcontractor arrived uh, about April 25th, uh, but because uh, Banks' trailer and front loader wasn't available, they basically sat around the whole day. They made a couple of saw cuts into the foundation. They sat around until one o'clock or so and then, then left. And then we went through a period of about two follow-on days where the trailer came for a while and then it had to take the front loader to Port Walton for another job. And so there was a total of probably about eight hours of work done to remove this section of uh, patio foundation, which in fact left the property in worse condition than if they had done nothing because nobody ever came to dig the footers or to build the framing for the footers afterwards. When they left after removing the uh, concrete that was the last time they were on site okay so the way that i understand this you gave them a, a significant amount of money and then they came out and did some demolition is that a yes yeah I, I apologize I, I didn't tell I'm you this sorry, earlier yeah, she's, yeah, she's is, trying to type and so we don't is, want to slow her down yes okay uh, um based on the um uh, but then after that you had communications where they made promises that they would come back out and get things done that's right when they when they left on the uh fifth they said it's ready for footers we'll have the concrete guy out tomorrow actually well as in uh, many of the other occasion tomorrow came and no contractor was on site. Uh, and that happened continuously on, on multiple days. Oh, we're working on getting the foundation guy out there as long as soon as his contract, contract or uh, schedule is uh, open, we'll get him out there. Nothing ever happens until they went out of business and stopped communicating. Do you have a calculation of what your restitution should be? I'm sorry? Do you have a calculation of what your restitution should be? It should be, uh, in my opinion, $27,250. Okay. 
Okay. And you are seeking restitution, correct? I am seeking restitution. Can you write that down for me, please? Have you been in, ton um, in touch with the bankruptcy court, or have you been listed? I am a party to the bankruptcy court. All right. Uh, it's you should note uh, that bank, banks own filings in the bankruptcy court uh, with the bankruptcy court uh, list over 160 unsecured creditor claims totaling 4.7 million dollars 4.7 million dollars uh, your work isn't done here uh, almost all claims uh, listed there are listed as uh, construct the source claim source is listed as construction jobs thank you is there anything else you wanted to share with the board no I think that summarizes it it does cover a lot is there any questions that the board has for the witness no <clears throat> you can have a seat if you like that's the that's the that's the case um, from from the uh, for the board regarding Matt Banks. You could have a seat if you like. Thank you very much. Make a motion that we move this to disciplinary hearing based on the alleged violations and any corrections that are needed, um, and also mention the restitution requested of twenty seven thousand two hundred fifty dollars. Second, a motion made and seconded in the discussion. Being done. All those in favor, say aye. Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion to send to disciplinary hearing based on the violations specified in the documentation and the restitution requested is Thank approved. You. Thank you. The next case we would call is on their docket at 7-5. Matthew S. Banks, doing business as Banks Construction, LLC. State registered license RR2828120001. CCB complaint number 2208118, COM. Lisa Rogers, homeowner. She's not present for medical reasons. 6036 Suntan Circle, Pensacola, Florida, 32526. Is Mr. Banks present? Was notice sent? Yes. Mr. Banks is not, has, is not present, has not been present for any of the hearings we've, we've had today. Um, Ms. Reber is present, and we'd like to swear her in. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I swear. Thank you. Ms. Reber, um, because um, Ms. Rogers isn't here um, to speak for herself, we're going to go into a few more details as we go through this, okay? Okay. Um, let me draw your attention to the um, documents, the first document you would have received from Ms. Rogers. That would have been the complaint? That's correct. All right. Um, on her complaint, can you tell us uh, what the nature of it was? Um, there were no permits pulled on her property. There was uh, some electrical and plumbing work done. Um, this was to be a renovation of, I believe it was two bathrooms, um, replacing some lighting fixtures. Can you tell from your from her complaint when was the last time she um, had any physical work performed at her location? March twenty third, twenty twenty two. And the location of that um, was the address we read into the record earlier on Suntan Circle. Yes, that's correct. I'm looking now at the contract that's that was um, sent to you. This was received from Ms. Rogers? It was. All right, and it appears there was kitchen work and hall bathroom? Yes, that's correct. Based on your review of those records, were there any permits that were required to be pulled for those? Yes, there were. All right, and were any of those permits pulled? No, they were not. All right, and do you know of any money exchanged hands? Yes, um, Ms. Rogers, put a deposit, 50% deposit down of $18,100 on March 17th, 2021. And she provided proof of that in the form of a check that's been redacted for the record? That's correct. All right. 
She also provided to you, um, uh, as far as the contract, was there any language in there regarding homeowner recovery fund? There was not. All right. She also provided to you correspondence between the two of them? Yes. And did you have an opportunity to review that correspondence? I did. Was, um, did you find anything in, within that correspondence that um, countered what she said, which is they had not been out to the property um, since March 23 of 2022? No, I didn't. Any additional information within that correspondence you'd like to point out to the board now? No, there's nothing. She sent to, uh, Ms. Rogers sent a de demand letter to, um, to, I mean, her attorney <coughs> sent a demand letter to Banks on July 21st, 2022. Is that what you found? That's correct. And that canceled the contract and requested a, turn of 9, 000, a return of $9,550? That is correct. And do you know that if that's the restitution she would be seeking today? Did you have that communication? Yes, she would be. Okay. She also provided some photographs of uh, the work that was done. We can just pull those up for the board briefly for the, for the board to be able to see the items. To be clear, there's been no further contact um, from banks to resolve this issue and there has been no uh, is that correct that is correct. all right and as far as um, the um, there's been no funds Lisa Rogers has not contacted you and told you that she's received any funds from the defendant as well right she hasn't received any funds all right at this time we'd ask that all these items that have been um, placed before the board as exhibits um, as well as the investigative report uh, by the by, investigator Reber be moved into evidence. Make a motion to move the items into evidence. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Being none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion passes to, to submit all evidence into the documentation. Based on your review of the documents that provided in your conversations with the homeowners, yep. with the homeowner, we could have to you? Vote. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> she thought you voted. <laughs> okay. I'm making notes over you. Did we vote? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Keep me straight, guys. You can vote again if you like. Um, um, by, based on the items that have now been moved into evidence, um, that list of documents gathered, your review of public permitting records and statements given to you by the homeowner. Would you, were you able to um, determine any alleged violations? Yes, I was. And what were those alleged violations? Code section 1837C7, termination of a construction project in which the contractor is engaged or under contract to shall be considered to have been abandoned after 90 days if the contractor terminates said project without notification to the prospective owner and without just cause for such abandonment. Code section 87-37C11, finding that a contractor is guilty of fraud or deceit or gross negligence, incompetency or misconduct in the practice of contracting. Florida Statute 489-126-2A1, apply for permits necessary to do work within 30 days after the date payment is made, except where the work does not require a permit under the applicable codes and ordinances. Code section 1837D9J, failure to notify residential property owner of recovery fund, Florida Statute 489.126-2A as amended. Mr. Chairman, that's the case that we have to present for the Contractor Competency Board. Make a motion move to disciplinary hearing based on the alleged violations noted and any corrections and uh, also restitution being requested for $9,550. Second. Motion made and seconded. Ended discussion. Being none. All those in favor say aye. 
Aye. Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion is approved to send a disciplinary hearing based on the alleged violations presented and the restitution requested. The next case we have before the board is under item number 76, Matthew S. Banks doing business as Banks Construction LLC, state registered license RR2828120001, CCB complaint number 2208122. Regarding this is Jacobo and Lynn Cruz, is that correct? Um, as the homeowners, 4965 Castell. Castells, Pensacola, Florida, 32504. Um, we have uh, on the front row, I believe we already have Jacobo and Lynn Cruz. Is that correct? All right. I'll sound the room for the defendant Banks. Has Banks entered the room? He has not responded. Um, we also, do you have any other interested witnesses that would be testifying with you today? No. All right. And then we also have Ms. Reber present. If we could have the witnesses sworn. Solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Right. Yes. Thank you. I swear. If you could have a seat, we're going to take some testimony from Ms. Reber. Ms. Reber, did you have an opportunity to conduct an investigation into the above mentioned case? Yes, I did. And I apologize. I'm, I need to back up just for a moment to ask Madam Secretary if she sent notice. Yes. All right. And was there? Um, and we've already sounded in the room that Mr. Banks is not present. Going back to Ms. Reber's investigation, um, you conducted a, a, an investigation. What type of items did you take into custody? Or I what items did you take into custody? I received a complaint form, copy of the contract between the parties, proof of payment, correspondence between the parties, and um, some insurance that was provided by another contractor. Um, do you know where these, uh, where the location of this con of this uh, contract would have been? Was it in the city? Yes, it is. Okay. Did you also have an opportunity to speak with the homeowners? I did. All right. Um, based on your review of the complaint and the documents, were there any permits pulled? No, there was not. All right. Um, and you um, asked, would you have checked that on the on the city permitting? Yes, I have access to city permitting. All right. And was there any information in the contract regarding the homeowner recovery fund? There was not. And this is the type of work that would require the permit to be pulled, right? Yes. All right. You mentioned there was some insurance documentation that was presented? Yes. Um, the cruises needed insurance proof um, for their HOA, and uh, they, they advised that they were presented insurance, but it appeared that the certificate of insurance listed were other people, and the insured was Lacoste Construction Group. And those were presented by Matt Banks. Who should have been listed as the insured? Matthew Banks. And Banks Construction? That's correct. It appears there's also a document of liability insurance um, on the, the second insurance document. Has Banks Construction as insured? That's correct. And the um, additional insured or a certificate holder one has lacoste on it and i think the other one has i mean there's one or two more an electrical contractor there's one for kill electric or kyle electric yes okay. none of these pertain to hurt their job at all It would appear within the documents that Jesse Lacoste, the surplus lines disclosure and acknowledgement, it's the page before these documents. Yeah, 
surplus lines. Right. Mm -hmm. The surplus lines disclosure and acknowledgement was signed by Jesse Lacoste digitally. Yes, it was. And it was um, and it was signed on August third, twenty twenty two. That's correct. And this was presented to um, the homeowners by banks, banks construction. Yes. That's something else. I'm sorry. The, uh, for that. The complaint that we filed were two: one for our home and one for my office. Okay. So uh, that will be the next case the coming. So let me just be clear. We have two cases today involving um, the two, um, Jacobo Cruz, also the building LLC is the second case, which is at 7-7? Seven, seven? Yes. So okay. all of that information is for LLC. All right. So for Castell, he did nothing. He just walked in. He took our money. Let me ask you to come to the microphone, if you don't mind. Okay. And let me have you state your name for okay. the record. And Lynn Cruz, okay. for 4965 Castells Road, Pensacola, Florida. The first case is for 4965 Castells Road. Matt Banks on March, uh, 20, uh, the, first week of March the first week of March, March he walked March into our house. We called him, asked him for to give us a price on our home. He did, he signed a contract. He walked in, he got 50% down. We wrote him a check, he walked out, and we never seen him again. The second case was for my husband's office on March 22nd. We asked him to give uh, sign a contract for his office, and that's for 4400 Bayou Boulevard, Suite 51. Let me do this, let me slow you down because we have to keep these separate as okay. we file, exactly. as we determine the charges. So on your first case, you had a contract with Mr. Uh, with Mr. Banks, all right, and, and you gave him how much money? We gave him 29,000. Okay, and that was for construction on your home? Yes. All right. In our home. And there was no work done on that? Nothing. Never, okay. It never reappeared. Okay. He gave us some uh, instructions to visit the builder's plan, but there was never anything entered in that, in that site. Okay. We went to the website couple of times. Uh, he said someone from his team would contact us, have a meeting, and go over details, design, everything. Uh, a couple of times they tried to contact us, but we couldn't agree on the meeting time. Uh, and finally, a few months later, someone <coughs> Agreed to visit our home on a Friday afternoon, and uh, she went and looked at the place and took some measurements. And that's all that she did, and she said she'll get back to us. Nothing ever happened. So, on your home, um, we have a complaint that you filed. Um, we also, did you file all these we documents filed together? Two complaints. Okay. Okay, and we have two cases, so we're, I'm just we're going to focus on the home. We received from you um, a, a contractor a complaint from you on that one. We also re show evidence of where you uh, provided twenty nine thousand dollars in a check to Banks Construction yes. for your home. Okay, and then there's a contract here uh, for the work that was supposed to be done at your home. Yes. Is that correct? And that contract totaled fifty eight thousand dollars. Yes. So you gave him a 50% uh, yeah. down payment, okay? Um, and did you have communications with him by email or any other system with him or his company? Did you have communications him, with him regarding your home? Yes, we text message. Ver verbal is okay. a few times by phone. Most of the other communications were text. My wife, because I'm going to be busy most of the day, so text back and forth. And if you look up on the on that screen, are those the items that so you provided to us? Yes. Yeah, those are the okay. Just, uh, okay. And so you can identify those are the, those are the documents that are related to your home. Yes. Okay. And the insurance documents are related to the next yes. case. Okay. If you can hold on just a moment, let me just 
check on something real quick. The items that we've discussed, I'm going to ask the board if the items that we discussed here with um, regarding the 220812 case um, with the cruises regarding their home on Castells? Castells. Castells. Um, those items would be the, the, their complaint, the contract, the report that was done by Ms. Reaver, um, their proof of payment, and email communications or, or text messages. Okay. Yes, so, okay, any of those communications, we ask that those items be moved into evidence in 2208122. Make a motion to move the items into evidence. Second. Motion made and seconded. End of discussion. Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion to enter all evidence into the uh, for disciplinary hearing into the. Uh, into the record for the into the record thank you so if you out. can hold on just a moment let me get one question out of miss reaver and then we'll come back to you okay because we're not done with um we're going to take your other case rather quickly if that's okay all right um miss reaver as far as um any permits being pulled did you have the opportunity to determine in case number two two zero eight one two two that's the home of of the cruises was any per were any permits pulled no there was not and was it work that required a permit yes it was did you have an opportunity to review the um, contract? I did. And was there any homeowner recovery fund statement within the contract? There was not. All right. I'm going to come back to you on the allegations because I believe Mr. Cruz has something he wants to say about the work that was done at, or not done at his house. Was there additional information we want to focus on for the your home? Did, was there, um, I knew that you had something more you wanted to say. We're going to talk about your business in a moment. I'm just focusing on your home right now. Is there something additional? Yes. Yes, we have two complaints against him on, on your, okay. So we're, we're, basically, there's nothing on our home other than he just walked in, took our money, and then left. I didn't do anything. Yeah. So there's not much on our home. But it's, it's true. So on your home. The only reason I think he hung around was because a few days later we asked him to do some work in my office. And, uh, he did the same thing. So if, um, a few days later, after you wrote him the twenty-nine thousand dollar check, he came back. Yeah. Okay. Come back for the office. So as far as restitution in the home case, that would be $29,000, yes. is that correct? Okay. I'm going to have Ms. Reaver read off the allegations in the case involving your home, okay. um, and then we'll move on to the office, if that's yes. all right. Thank Are you me. comfortable with that? Okay. Yes. Ms. Reaver, if you would, um, we're able to determine any alleged violations regarding the homes, the home of the cruises. Yes, I was. All right. And if you could put those on the record for the board. Code section 1837C7, termination of a construction project in which the contractor is engaged or under contract who shall be considered to have been abandoned after 90 days. If the contractor terminates said project without notification to the prospective owner and without just cause for such abandonment. 18, I'm sorry, code section 1837C11, Finding that a contractor is guilty of fraud or deceit or gross negligence, incompetency, or misconduct in the practice of contracting. Florida Statute 489-126-2A1, apply for permits necessary to do work within 30 days after the date payment is made, except where the work does not require a permit under the applicable codes and ordinances. Code Section 1837-D9J, Failure to notify residential property owner of recovery fund, Florida Statute 489.126-2A as amended. Did the board have any questions for the cruises or for Ms. Reaver? Mr. Chair, I have a question. Yes. Um, just 
So when you think it can't get any crazier, there's insurance here submitted under Lacoste by banks? Yes, sir. There, there was, but I misstated it was not for the house. It was going to be for the next case for Dr. Cruz's business. To clarify, the insurance was strictly for the, uh, his office. It had nothing to do with this case. Okay. Well, I'll ask my question in a minute then. I'd like to make a motion to move to disciplinary hearing based on the alleged violations as amended if needed. Second. And, and, the, and the restitution of 49000 Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? The restitution amount, I believe, was 29000 on the house alone. Yes. Okay. No, any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion to send the disciplinary hearing based on the alleged alloc allocation of violations and the request for restitution is approved. Thank you. If you would stay up here, we'll, help, we'll ask you to get us through the seven, uh, the next one, which is 7-7, seven, seven, okay? okay. Um, I'm going to read off the style of the case. Matthew S. Banks, doing business as Banks Construction, LLC, State Registered License, RR2828120001, CCB Complaint Number 2209178, Jacobo, am I saying that right? Jacobo Cruz? Jacobo. Thank you for correcting me. Um, uh, and this is doing business as the building, LLC. Um, 4400 Bayou Boulevard, Suite 51, Pensacola, Florida, 32503, and that is within the city limits. Is that correct? Yes. Thank you. You've already been sworn in, and I remind you that you remain sworn in. Ms. Reber's also been sworn in. I would remind you that she remains sworn in. Um, Madam Secretary, has there been notice sent to Mr. Banks? Yes. All right. Was there any response that you're aware of? No. All right. I'm going to turn um, back to... Um, Back to Ms. Reber and ask her if she had an opportunity to conduct an investigation uh, regarding the property that's on Bayou Boulevard. Yes, I did. All right. And what documents did you take into your custody for the purposes of that complaint? We had a complaint form, a copy of the contract, and proof of payment. All right. Now, and I understand there was some confusion um, regarding... I'm sorry, did you have something else you wanted to add? I was correcting that, but go ahead. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Um, and to correct that, the insurance provided to the Cruises was, or Mr. Cruz, was actually for this case. And there was also some email communications or text messages um, um, between the Cruises and Banks Construction. Did that involve both cases? It did. All right, both, both the case for their home and the case for the business. That is correct. All right. Um, I know that those items have been listed um, on the agenda for the, as a, a document for 7-7, seven, seven, I would make the board aware, I mean for 7-6, I would make the board aware that we would, um, when we do the minutes, we'll make sure that those goes, go into the correct place on the public record. It'll appear in both of them. Um, but at this time, we'd ask that all of those items that we just discussed, which is the in, including the insurance documents and the text messaging or emails, be moved into evidence in the case involving the Bayou Boulevard property. I make a motion we move the items into evidence. Motion made. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and second. Any discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. <clears throat> Being none, the motion to approve to move all the documentation concerning this case into evidence. Thank you. Regardless of where they appear. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We appreciate your help on this matter. If we could, um, I want to just ask Ms. Reber um, a couple of questions, and then we'll move, we'll move to the, back to the cruises and allow them. Um, were you able to compile a list of allegations based on the records that you took into custody? Yes, I was. All right, and what were those allegations? Code section 1837C7, termination of a construction project in which the contractor is engaged or under contract to shall be considered to have been abandoned after 90 days if the contractor terminates said project without notification to the prospective owner and without just cause for such abandonment. 
Code Section 1837C11, finding that a contractor is guilty of fraud or deceit or gross negligence, incompetency or misconduct in the practice of contracting. Florida Statute 489-126-2A1, apply for permits necessary to do work within 30 days after the date payment is made, except where the work does not require a permit under the applicable codes and ordinances. Code Section 1837D9J, Failure to Notify Residential Property Owner of Recovery Fund. Let me, let me slow you down right there. Can we um, discuss that one before you read that and before you go further um, into the record? Is that just for residential properties, the requirement that uh, they be notified of the Homeowner Recovery Fund? That is accurate. Um, that code section pertains only to residential property owners. All right. So among the, um, the allegations that you were able, the violations that you were able to determine, there would be the termination of the construction project, the finding that a contractor is guilty of fraud, um, and the uh, failure to apply for permits. Is that correct? That is correct. All right. So the last count there, we've, the last allegation, we would drop off of that for the board. All right. Were you able to determine if any permits had been pulled? There were no permits pulled. And this was work that required a permit? Yes, it was. All right. If you would help us, Mr. Hokobo. You can correct me if I say it wrong. Mr. Cruz, if you could help us with this. So what I should add that on this second case, we made a payment for 19290 which is half of Two nineteen or ninety? Two nine zero. Thank you. Uh, half of the thirty-eight thousand five hundred eighty that he ordered for the project. And what communications did you have with him? Uh, the based on the communication list, the contract itself, the, we both signed it on uh, the twenty third twenty second or twenty third of March. March 20. And that was 2022? 2022. All right. And, uh, after that, there were some communications consisting mainly that he does not have a commercial license. So the association requires commercial license. So he proposed that James Lacoste would do the project. Jesse. Oh, Jesse. I'm sorry. Yeah. Jesse Lacoste. And uh, after that, there was some back and forth with his office. There was a lady called Angie Lacoste, uh, managed a lot of the communications, and uh, they could never submit the necessary papers. And until we found out that uh, this person was uh, no longer in business, we found out recently, maybe a couple of months ago. So as far as, so Banks told you, he took your money, if, just tell me if right. I've got these steps correct. Right. He took your money, signed a contract with you, and then told you he couldn't do the work because he doesn't have a commercial license? No, the association told him, told yeah. him that Matt Banks could not do the work, but Matt Banks insists that he was gonna do the work. He... I just need you to step a little closer to the microphone. Okay, yeah. sorry. He, Matt Banks, the association said that Matt Banks couldn't do the work, that uh, he didn't have a commercial license. So Matt Banks said that he could do the work, but he was gonna get Jesse LaCrosse to, um, to pull it under his name, pull the permits and to get everything under his name, but Matt Banks was still gonna do the work. So you had no communications with Mr. LaCoste though? None. All right. Other than he pulled the the uh he was going to get the workman's comp insurance and he was going to get everything that needed to do the job okay. so when and i just want to clarify because it is confusing when we find these insurance documents in here yes so you didn't communicate with lacoste but you were provided documents that lacoste had signed exactly all right and those were the provided to you by matthew banks yes Okay, and what, what was the reason you said, I believe there was a homeowners association involved yes, in this? Yes, the association of Cordova Square. Oh, okay. Cordova mm -hmm. Square, yeah, has mm -hmm. some requirements. They have to use certain material. They have to put up certain type of fence or dumpsters. They do require some things. 
So they spend some time uh, communications back and forth with the association, and uh, they still need to submit some additional papers, and they could never produce them. And first, okay. Jesse LaCrosse submitted uh, workman's comp insurance, but underneath a different man's name, this, the electric guys. Yeah. The Kill Electric. Yes. K-Y-L yeah. Electric. And then I said, this is underneath somebody else's name. This isn't under Jesse LaCrosse. And then that's when Matt Banks showed us a text that he texted Jesse LaCrosse saying, bro, this is not the right name. And then that's when Jesse submitted that other insurance. Okay. To summarize, really, uh, Cordova Square is a commercial entity, and this is only for residential I mean, complaints are for, primarily for. They had to have commercial con contractors do the work. All right. Does the board have any questions for the, for the homeowners? Mr. Chair, I have yeah. a question somewhere in here. Back to my statement, this can't get any crazier, but it is. So... Section uh, chapter 49 of the of the construction, and I understand the, the fact is evidently Matt Banks is not licensed to do commercial, so he had Jessica Claus step in. His contract, though, is still with the owners, and he is out of line. He's not legally allowed to contract commercial being a residential. Chapter 49. I mean, that speaks of that. So we should add that somewhere to these violations. I mean, I, if it seemed like I want to pile on, yes, ma'am, I want to stack this thing. And it also should work as well to Mr. Lacoste, who was <clears throat> going against this, you know, he didn't have a contract and he's out here. So there's a, you know, collaboration between these guys that, I don't know what all can be added to this, if we need to add this at a later time, but, and if this needs to be submitted to the insurance, for our state insurance divisions, um, I'd say let's push this thing as far as we can. Um, and just as a little sideline, Ms. Bennett, I appreciate you pushing as much as you can and anybody that's here, y'all throw everything you can. It don't matter if you get any money or not. I say it doesn't matter. Yes, it does matter. But at this point, it this is something we've never had. Mr. Matthews, you said we've never had this before. And, uh -huh. and as far as I know, in our county ever, and it, um, it needs to be addressed harsh. So while, um, while we were questioning and we were talking back and forth with the cruises, Jennifer Hampton and Melissa Reber were in the process of finding another count. They were aware, they were aware of the language. Um, and uh, Ms. Hamilton, uh, Ms. Hampton, I'm sorry, Ms. Hampton pulled um, uh, code 1837D9B, which is contracting outside the scope of licensing. Um, it, the language for that is contracting beyond scope of practice allowed by license. No safety hazard, first violation, $500 fine, and repeated violations, and it continues to talk um, regarding those um, repeated violations plus suspension or revocation. So of the three, we have the three charges that we've already listed. Then we would also add um, for the board's consideration is the 1837D9B, which is the contracting outside of scope. Um, I don't have the uh, 489 statute on that. It does cite our, our, um, our statute, I mean, our code does cite the 489.113 and 489.117 as part of its language. So the, there would still be four counts before the board and we would, um, we would uh, turn the issue over to the board for them to make decisions regarding the allegations. Make a motion we move to disciplinary hearing based on the uh, amendments to the allegations, the four recently cited, um, and the restitution of $19,290. Second. Motion made, second. Any discussion? Clarification on the motion. It's the three original violations plus the addition of practicing outside the scope of his uh, license. That's correct. Um, hold on just a moment. I want to double check something as far as notice. Okay. 
Just a moment. Just for the record, whenever notice does go out, it does just send the complaint. Um, if he had appeared today, he would have um, been, a, or contacted us at any time, he would have been aware of all the facts that were involved in this case, along with the investigative report, but there was no contact from Mr. Banks, so he wasn't seeking further information regarding the charges. So if the board would like, um, we can put those charges up in front of the board, and then I can just uh, speak into the record the remaining charge if you need that. Jesse LaCrosse um, pulled the permit at the city of Pensacola. Okay. That's probably why we were not aware of the permit because exactly. it wasn't in Matt Banks' name. Exactly. But he did pull a permit. Yeah. Mr. Lister, you yes, spoke earlier about possible um, a case against Mr. LaCoste in regard to this situation. It is, it the, is it the direction of the board that we proceed with um, investigating that matter further? Mr. Chair, I would make a motion that the... Have a motion. We have a well, motion on the floor. Right, we have a motion before the board if we can make the decision as to whether or not they should go to the disciplinary proceeding and then um, if we could discuss yeah. that because there is a code <coughs> involved. So how do we proceed? The then? motion on the floor is to uh, go to the disciplinary hearing based on the first three violations and plus the addition of practicing outside his uh, license. So we need to vote on that before we... Yes, end. we have to vote on that. Aye. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion to take it to the disciplinary hearing is approved. And for the now then, we'll entertain a motion Mr. Chair, I'd uh, like to make a motion that the staff be uh, looking into any uh, improprieties uh, based on the cost is involved. The cost uh, construction being involved with pulling permits without a contract and providing insurance for another contractor that's not licensed to do said work so for the record um, what we think that would be would be the aiding or abetting any uncertified or unregistered person to evade any provision of this article yes that's it okay so said second, second. Got a motion made and second in any discussion being not all those in favor say aye aye, aye. opposed like sign the motion to investigate Lacoste's involvement in this case is approved there's one more matter that we need to um, handle with the cruises. One of them is the restitution for the house, and then the other one was the restitution um, for the business. So I'm showing twenty-nine thousand dollars for the house, plus an additional, but plus the restitution for the business case, which was nineteen thousand two hundred ninety dollars. I think I think those were part of the original motions. Okay, I'm just in making the original motion for the house. It's in there. Right. Okay. Yes. But restitution for the second case cannot be determined yet because we don't know the involvement. We can still, um, even if they were co-conspirators, uh, co it can be applied against both of them. Okay. I'm already, it's already in the motion. Okay. It was already in there. All right. So that restitution amount is 19290 Okay. Just so you know, what we did is, um, what the board did, just to make sure you can understand what was going on, the board has decided that we should go forward with an investigation to find probable cause whether or not Jesse Lacoste uh, aided and abetted banks in what he was doing. Okay. Okay. And so you may hear from us again. Thank you. Okay. You, you will hear from us again. Yes. No All right. doubt about that. Right. Thank you very much for bringing this I to our attention. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, staff. The next case before the board um, is uh, under 7 8. Matthew S. Banks doing business as Banks Construction LLC, state registered license RR2828120001. CCB complaint number 2208136C0, I mean COM, regarding Eddie Fowler, homeowner. Is Eddie Fowler present? I see Mr. Uh, Fowler raising his hand. That's at 260 Lindsay Lane. And that's in Cantonment, Florida, 32533. Is Mr. Banks present? Nope. He has not raised his hand, and we have not seen him present here today. Um, um, also, Ms. Reaver is present. 
before the board? Okay. If we can have both, um, I, Mr. Um, Mr. Fowler, are you going to testify today? If we have Mr. Fowler and Ms. Reber sworn in. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I swear. Okay. Um, and if we could have uh, Madam Secretary uh, let us know if there was any um, notice provided to Mr. Banks regarding today's probable cause hearing. Yes, there was. All right. We're working on some paperwork. Give us just a moment. Chair, at this time, I'm going to pass out um, the investigative report. It appears that the investigative report that got uploaded to the agenda is missing the alleged violations. So I'm going to pass out the actual accurate document. For the record, we will include um, the document that you're receiving in the minutes, so it will um, be within the public records uh, when the minutes come out. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Do you need a break? So we've got three more to go. Do you need a break? Okay. All right. We've already covered whether or not notice the defendant was not present. If we could turn to Ms. Reber regarding her um, investigation. Ms. Reber, do you have, Reber, did you have an opportunity um, to review any documents provided to you regarding the above styled case and Mr. Fowler's situation? Yes, I did. Okay. Um, did you receive a complaint? I did. All right. And, and what other documents did you receive? A contract between the parties, proof of payment, and correspondence between the parties. All right. When you reviewed the contract, were you able to determine if it was a job in which permits should have been pulled? Yes, I was. And was a permit pulled? Yes, there was a permit pulled on February 23rd, 2022, with a footing inspection that passed on 4-22-22. The permit was voided on August 11th, 2022, by the Scambia County building official due to revocation of bank's license. All right. And is I'm sorry, I'm trying to get closer to that microphone. All right, I apologize. Um, as far as the homeowner's construction recovery fund, were there any statements in the contract regarding the homeowner's construction fund? There was not. It appears that um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Fowler paid banks a 50% deposit on July 22nd, 2021 of $70,000. Is that what you show? That's correct. Right. And um, on what date was that permit pulled? Can you tell from the record? Uh, yes, February 23rd, 2022. All right. Mr. Chairperson, at this time we'd ask that these documents that we, um, we've announced were taken into, um, were taken in, uh, were provided by the homeowner that they be moved into evidence and also Miss Reber's investigative report. And Maybe. we'd also ask that it be the investigative report that has the chart, the uh, alleged violations as provided to the board. Make a motion to move the items into evidence. Motion made, is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. End of discussion. Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion move all documentation presented in this case into evidence to include the replacement of the investigative report it's approved it's approved sorry <laughs> thank you um, um miss reber could you please tell the board what the alleged violations um you you uncovered based on your review of the documentation that was provided and public records 
Code Section 1837C7, termination of a construction project in which the contractor is engaged or under contract to shall be considered to have been abandoned after 90 days if the contractor terminates said project within notification to the prospective owner and without just cause for such abandonment. Code Section 1837C11, finding that a contractor is guilty of fraud or deceit or gross negligence, incompetency or misconduct in the practice of contracting. Florida Statute 489.126-2A1, apply for permits necessary to do work within 30 days after the date payment is made, except where the work does not require a permit under the applicable codes and ordinances. Code Section 1837D9J, Failure to Notify Residential Property Owner of Recovery Fund, Florida Statute 489-126-2A as amended. Mr. Fowler is present. I apologize. Mr. Fowler is present. Would you like to come forward and make any statements to the board? Thank you. Good morning. My name is Andy Fowler. I live at 260 Lindsay Lane in Cantonment. Uh, you heard that it was a $70,000 check. There was also a $30,000 check given later on. Um, the reason that I wanted to do additional in my home is I am, and my wife are medical foster parents. We handle kids that from, we have four kids right now, uh, everywhere from traumatic brain injury to uh, cerebral palsy to traumatic uh, uh, facial reconstructions, bedridden kids. And the reason we wanted to do the addition is because in, in our county at Sacred Heart Hospital, there are children that are waiting on beds, I, uh, place, places to stay. Uh, I called Mr. Banks. He came to my home. I told him my story. Tears welled up in his eyes as he sat there at my table, said, I will be glad to, to, to help you. I want you to start before uh, the middle of summer. I said, sir, I can't wait that long. He said, well, Mr. Fowler, because of what y'all are doing, you give me $70,000 and we'll get started on you immediately. Yeah. Um, he did a remodel on my kitchen the week before Christmas. Uh, I gave him the money in, in July and he kept he hauling around and finally got to, my, to remodel my kitchen so we could have rooms for wheelchairs in my kitchen. We had to, to rent a place to live from the, the 19th of, of December all the way to the, uh, the 15th of January and still had to go in and I had to pin up wires that were hanging down where he removed a wall. I had to put stuff down on the floor to where my kids could crawl around and uh, it was just a mess. Um, I continued to call my, my, uh, my uh, project manager and they finally come in and installed uh, kitchen cabinets. He made a temporary kitchen cabinet and then he put my cabinets in. I had to finish my ceiling, had to hang my lights, and then when I went to turn my, uh, my lights off in my kitchen, my bathroom lights would go off. I cut the ceiling out, I looked up in there, there were naked wires with just wire nuts, no junction box, no nothing to keep the wires secure. I replaced all that and I did that and when I told Matt that I had to do that, he got angry at me for doing the work. And I said, son, I've, I, I, I said, you're, you're fixing to, to cross a bear here. I'm sorry, but that's what I said. I'm a, I'm a pastor here in this, in this town, so I have to keep my, my integrity in check. But a little bit of the, the old Eddie come out. Um, so I, but I did repair it. I did get it right. I re redone the ceiling and hung my lights. Um, I am seeking a restitution of $65,000 because, and that's being gracious, because all he did was my, my flooring, which I had to pay for the flooring up front, uh, and then they, they installed it. And then he put a footer out that still got the steel sticking up. I had to call them and get them to put the little orange caps on because I have grandchildren who cannot play in my front yard now. So I'm asking for $65,000. If we get it, great. If not, I just want something done to Matt Banks. Uh, I'm, I'm, I live with a woman that's very mean, and she, she told me to be very forceful with you gentlemen today to tell them that she's angry. So, uh, but again, uh, the only reason we did this is because we're trying to help foster children. And um, I'm hoping that y'all take that into consideration and, and go get him. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Mr. Powell. I do have a couple questions, if that would be all right. Well, uh, Mr. Chairman, you said that you were in a hotel from December 19th to January 15th. Was it understood that you would have to be in a hotel while he did these renovations? It was understood that we would have to be out of the house. 
Okay. And he didn't care where we went, where we went to family or whatever. But we rented we rented a house for Christmas, and so our family could get together. And then we had to when we tried to come back home, he wasn't done with the with the tearing out, and so we had to find another place to live to the 19th or the 15th. I'm sorry, the 15th of January, I think it was. Okay, so that was additional time that you mm -hmm. didn't expect to have to be out. Right. And that was based on his guarantee that you would be able to move back into your home. Right. What was the date? Did he tell you what date you'd be able to move back into no, your home? No, they just kept saying, uh, we're working on it, we're working on it. And finally, we, we went in and swept up the floor and and put our furniture back, uh, broken picture frames. Uh, when I went in there to check on the work, the, the boys that were in there, my house smelled like pot. There was vulgar music playing on my TV. And when I, when I run them boys out of my house and called Matt, um, he said, oh, I'll take care of it. Well, I don't know if he took care of it or not. But anyway. Let me, um, if you would, I, I know we don't have those right now, but if you could give us a breakdown on the extended time that you had to be out. Sure. Um, because we're also going to ask for that from the from the board for restitution, the time that you had to be out on your own. Um, you said you also had to extend money to have the floor finished. Yeah, I, oh, I had I had to purchase the flooring. Okay. And then the installation was covered in in my contract. So he said. Okay, so the cost of the flooring was that um, in addition to your contract when mm -hmm. you contracted it. Mm -hmm. You knew all along you were going to yeah, have to yeah, buy the floor. I, I did. I, he, okay. he said if we were going to have a new floor, I'd have to buy the floor up front. Okay. And, and who ended up installing the flooring? Uh, one of his boys. Okay. So the calculation you've given us today is based on the work that he be began. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, okay. So we're going to go with your calculation on the restitution, which was the 65000 and if you could get us the information, the additional information on how much you had to expand yeah. for a place to stay. I will tell you this. When I gave him the other 30000 he said, Mr. Fowler, I'm so sorry for what's going on with the situation. He said, but to make it up to you, I'm going to put a brand new metal roof on your house for free. Santa Claus is coming to town. So, <laughs> anyway. But thank um, you. We do thank you for your time. I do want to ask you about these communications. Um, I believe those were up on the board. Did you happen to see those when those went up? Yes, ma'am. And those, uh, you do recognize those as the communications you were having with Matt Banks? Yes, ma'am. Up until August the 9th, I think, was my last one with him. And that was August the 9th of this year? Yes, ma'am. Um, and I, I may have already asked, and I apologize. When was the last time you saw him? Um, well, or to be honest, anyone. I don't remember the date, but uh, I, dr I couldn't get him to answer his phone, so I drove up, parked behind his truck at his uh, business where he couldn't get out, and I walked into his office and demanded to see him and finally got back there. Okay, but as far as anyone working on your house, you haven't seen anybody since? Since the foundation. Since uh, February? The, the foot, the foot, uh, April, 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 they put the footing in, I think. Okay. If the board has any other questions for Mr. Fowler? All right. Thank you. I don't have any other questions. Thank you for your Thank help. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate you. Trustee Casey. <clears throat> Trustee Casey. Trustee Casey. That's the case we have to present for the board. Do we need to read the allegations in, or have they already been read? Oh, um, Melissa I, did read those in. But we can read them in again no, to make I'm it convenient. I'm good convenient. if they've been read. Okay. They have been read. Okay. I'll make a motion to take a disciplinary hearing based on the allegations presented along with a restitution request of 65000 and any additional costs that the member, the, the complainant, will bring against. Second. For, okay, thank you. Motion made and seconded. Is it discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion was approved to take a disciplinary hearing based on the allegations presented, including the restitution amount plus any additional that are identified concerning his housing. Thank you. The next one that's before the board is 7-9 on the agenda. Matthew S. Banks doing business as Banks Construction LLC State Registered License RR2828120001. CCB complaint number 2208121. Homeowner Colette Perry. 362 Riola Place, Pensacola, Florida, 32506. She is here. Okay. And Ms. Perry's present? All right. And um, is Mr. Banks present? He's not answered the call. 
Um, anyone else that would be um, an interested party that will be speaking on your behalf, Ms. Perry? Okay. Christina, it has what been so water for so long. Oh, okay. How do you spell your last name? R A E T E L L F F. All right. And then we also have Miss Reaver present. If you've raised your hands to be sworn. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I swear. Madam Secretary, was notice sent to Mr. Banks? Yes, it was. All right, and as stated earlier, he's not present today. That's correct. Thank you. Ms. Reber, let me ask you a few questions. Um, did you receive a complaint uh, from Ms. Perry? Yes, I did. Were there any other documents that you received from Ms. Perry? Yes, there was. And what were those? A complaint form, a copy of the contract between the parties, Proof of payment, a certificate of insurance from banks, notice of commencement, preliminary plans, demand letter, invoices, Woody Cushing roofing, additional expenses documentation, and the homeowner's calculations. Cancellation, sorry, and photos. Did you determine if there were any permits that should have been pulled for this job, for this contract? Uh, yes, on December 29th, 2021, a permit was pulled for an addition. The last inspection performed was a passing framing inspection on June 16th, 2022. The permit was voided on August 11th, 2022 by the Scambia County building official due to revocation of bank's license. Are you aware of um, the dates between when banks entered into the contract and when he, become, when he um, pulled the uh, permit? Um, entered into the contract on November 12th, 2021 and the permit was pulled on December 29th, 2021. And was payment also made, it appears she paid banks $39,800 on November 12th at the signing of the contract? That is correct. All right, and um, as far as the contractor homeowner recovery fund, was that paragraph put into that contract? It was not. Did you have an opportunity to speak with Miss Perry? Yes, I did. And she has with her today also Miss Ratzlaw. Is that correct? Um, and did you speak with her as well? I did not. Okay. Um, we'd ask that the items that have already been listed um, by Miss Reaver that she relied on in her investigation uh, be moved into evidence to include her investigative report. Make a motion we move the items into the record. Motion been made. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Motions approved to enter all items presented into evidence in this case. Thank you. Ms. Reaver, did you have an opportunity to, um, after reviewing the docs gathered, the public permitting records, and the statements uh, made by the owner, were you able to um, determine if there had, should be any alleged violations? Yes, I did. And what did you determine? Code section 1837C6, financial mismanagement and misconduct in the practice of contracting that causes financial harm to a customer. Code section 1837C7, termination of a construction project in which the contractor is engaged or under contract to shall be considered to have been abandoned after 90 days if the contractor terminates said project without notification to the prospective owner and without just cause for such abandonment. Code section 1837C11, finding that the contractor is guilty of fraud or deceit or gross negligence, incompetency or misconduct in the practice of contracting. 
Florida Statute 489-126-2A-1. Apply for permits necessary to do work within 30 days after the date payment is made, except where the work does not require a permit under the applicable codes and ordinances. Code section 1837-9, sorry, D-9-J. Failure to notify residential property owner of recovery fund, Florida Statute 489.126-2A as amended. Ms. Reber, I'm looking at your investigative report. It appears that Ms. Perry sent an event, a demand letter requesting a refund on August 2nd of 2022. That's correct. All right. And then um, are you aware that um, on, on, on August 8th, that, I'm sorry, according to your report, she received an invoice for $7,400 from the roofer? That is correct. And the roofer was able to, uh, told her at the time that Mr. Banks had not paid him? Yes, that's correct. Can you um, explain to the board um, the cancellation of insurance that occurred? Yes, um, Ms. Perry has received a cancellation of her insurance due to the fact that uh, her home banks had torn it to a condition where uh, it looked in disrepair to the insurance company. And so she received uh, from her mortgage company and her insurance company a notice of cancellation. Ms. Perry, if you'd like to come forward. And Ms. Ratzloff, you're welcome to come up with her as well. Just come up to the podium if you have anything you'd like to add. If you're more comfortable, we have another microphone where you could sit down if you'd be more comfortable. I can try to stand for a few minutes. <laughs> okay, all right. You're welcome to join us at the table if you like. Okay. Okay. Ms. Ra um, Ms. Perry, is there anything you'd like to um, add to what was already provided by Ms. Reber? Yeah. The contract covered multiple projects. So one project was the patio addition. Another project was the expansion of an office. That project never started. There was never a permit pulled for that. We have a, um, on the screen to your left. If you could take a look and tell us what that photograph is. That photo at the very top is actually upside down. Okay. It's <laughs> the roof of... Oh, now I there see. We go. <laughs> it is the um, roof where the um, soffit to my house was removed and left open. And then there were wires that were cut and pulled, um, electrical wires, speaker wires. And Matt Banks did have an electrician come after hours and on the weekend to try to repair that. He started the repair and never completed it. Um, and then my insurance canceled due to the damage. Um, I did have a friend who's an attorney that tried to work with me to file a claim against Matt Banks Insurance. The insurance has denied stating that it was neglect and it was not damage to the property. However, I beg to differ since that is the damage that was left, the whole side of my house was left open um, and it was quite dangerous. There were nails which I had to walk around and pick up on my own because I continued to use a side gate through the grass rather than the sidewalk area that I kept asking them. And this picture here, can you tell the board what that picture is of? This is the picture of where they put the beam in trying to connect to the house to start the roof area and that is how they left the house and I had taken that picture and sent it to Mac Banks and said this is unacceptable, I, you know, it's not safe for me, it's not safe for the children and he said he would have someone come back and help um, tidy it up and he did have someone come back and put a tarp around this area right here and then I had to put a folding table against the house to hold the metal flashing behind, um, which was pretty difficult for me because I have some disability. Okay, we're gonna go through these pictures and I just want you to tell the board about the pictures as we go through them, okay? 
I'm sorry. We're going to go through these pictures, and if you'll just tell the board what the pictures are as we go through them. Okay. This was where they had yeah, I got you. taken the part of the house off to tie in. Actually, my, I hired an engineer, um, structural engineer, for the plans for this um, that I had learned previously when I built the house. So I hired the same chip white engineer to design this, and actually the beam was supposed to go in and the inside of the house, the drywall was supposed to be taken off and the construction should have been done from the inside of the house out. But they chose to do it from the outside and they had to remove this whole section of the house to um, put that structural beam up there. And then this was um, the roof part that was put on and then they had put the footer in, had someone come out and put the footer in that was there till 10 o'clock at night trying to get the footer set with the beam and the post. And that's how he had left the underneath. Woody Cushions had come and put a flat roof on top. And then the permit was pulled for that and I was told that the uh, permit passed, but I called and had an additional inspection done to make certain that the roof was secure. Um, and after the fact, that's when Woody had notified me after I filed my complaint that Matt Banks had told him that I fired him. And at that point, I had not fired him. He was continuing to work. And Woody said, he, Matt Banks told him I never gave him any money and that he didn't have any money to pay him for the roof. Which so is that why he contacted you for funding correct. on the roof? Okay. Yeah, and he's agreed to work with me knowing everything that I'm going through plus everyone else. Okay, um, there's a, and this is the nails. Those Tell us the about those nails, are the nails. I found out in the grass. Okay. And that's just one day of nails. Because every day they would come or they, they, that's not all of the nails. That's just. Yeah, that was just. Okay. And for the record, that's Ms. Ratzlaw speaking. We just had to keep the record clear because this is evidence in a case. Um, so when you do speak, we'll just make sure that it's a little easier when the voices are different. So, but let's just get the na keep the name straight, okay? Is there anything else that you wanted to add to the case that you think the the board needs to hear about? Oh my gosh, it's just that's fine. So much. But we're here. We're here for you to give an opportunity to make the board aware of yeah. what you went through. I mean, he and he also started to put a. I had hired him to do a pocket door between my living area and my laundry room and also to re to put cabinets in the laundry room and put the pocket door in and then um, they cut the threshold out and then apparently somebody said the threshold needed to be cut out wider so now I have a dip between my living area of my hardwood floor and the tile to my laundry room and nobody's been able to fill that and it's actually a hazard, especially the way I walk. <laughs> I see that you sent him um, a letter. You sent Matt Banks a letter that was returned. Correct. I sent um, him a, a demand letter asking for a refund, and that was prior to even knowing he didn't pay um, for the roof. Yes. Okay. So let's talk about restitution. Are you ready for that? I don't have a total because okay. of the insurance. Um, I've had to complete the project and finish it and hire people. Okay. Um, and then uh, Ms. Weaver told me I needed to get the notice of commencement and the permit transferred to my name to continue to finish it, but I still have additional um, fees that I have to pay for it to be totally finished. Okay. And when you talk about fees, and that's to um, other contractors? Other contractors for okay. electrical and rewiring and, yeah. So you do want to ask for restitution, but you'd like to delay that to, to get an opportunity to give us that number. Or, yeah. Because you can ask for restitution for the amount of your contract and, and then if um, and any additional expenses, and we can go with that as a, as a of the amount you've paid him and yes. any additional uh, expenses, mm -hmm. and we can go with it from there. Yeah. If you're telling us that you had to have somebody basically come in and do everything except for the roof, where the roof passed, you know, the roof passed uh, the inspection, but you also paid for that gentleman too, right? Okay. If you'd like, we'll work with you and help you get uh, a calculation on your restitution, and we'll just plan on uh, giving that to the board at the di if there's a disciplinary hearing after they vote. We'll just plan on doing it at the next hearing. Does that work for you? That would work, yes. Okay. All right. If you
you have any questions? Do you have any questions for Ms. Perry or Ms. Ratzlaw? That would be the case of the state um, um, for the, uh, for the uh, on the uh, CCB complaint that we have to present. Mr. Chair, uh, just a little question about the insurance thing. When you filed, what what uh, was the complaint that was filed that was denied? With my insurance or his? His insurance. With his insurance, I um, actually I filed a com complaint with his um, local agent. The agent contacted, um, put a claim in for me, and the adjuster was to contact me. It took the adjuster about three weeks to contact me, and I kept contacting the agent, and the agent said, I'm not supposed to talk to you, just wait until you talk to the adjuster. So when the adjuster called, the adjuster just immediately told me that it was denied based on her conversation with the agent. The adjuster never took my side of what happened, never saw pictures, never came to the residence, never saw the damage, and just denied it. So my, and then I, she said she would send me a copy of the denial and I asked for a copy of the contract because I was added as um, an additional signature. Insure. Yeah. yeah. And um, she said she would send it to me and a couple of weeks went by and I never got anything. And I kept emailing and asking, they refused to send it, so my, friend who's an attorney sent a demand letter then within about five days then we received the denial stating that the claim was made for negligence and not damage but yet I never submitted anything in writing or verbally to the adjuster so I still feel like there may be a chance to file against it for damage especially seeing the photos I'm sorry, I don't have any questions based on that information. It's still before the board right. to determine whether or not um, you want to go forward on those allegations as as uh, listed by Ms. Reaver. You put the allegations back up, please. Oh, there they are. Allegations are uh, code section 1837C6, 1837C7, 1837C11, 489, uh, Florida statute 489126-2A1, and code section 1837D9J. Was there a, uh, it appeared by that there could be some hazardous situation left by not completing the work. Is there a any reference for? Isn't there a, a rule about creating hazardous conditions? Give us just a uh, Health, welfare. I believe there is. Two mm -hmm. I was just seeing if there's more charges that could be added to this. I know there is because we had one previously where they created a, uh, an atmosphere of smoke in there that caused respiratory mm -hmm. issues. I'm just getting a question. Mr. Chairman, the Bill of Code has an unsafe condition. It's very specific. Uh, you have to visit the site to see if it, uh, any of that meets the definition of unsafe condition. And really all that does is is uh, notifies everyone that it's unsafe and you're going in at your own risk. Okay. So just go ahead and move forward with the allegations presented and we'll see if there's something to add at a later date. Is that the Wait a minute. Wait a minute. With this being the probable yeah. cause hearing, we'd have to make the decision today. Um, if you give us just a moment, okay. we'll look that up. You can have a seat. You don't have to keep standing up. I was just looking up. I didn't know if you'd been in touch with my Florida CFO. You might want to reach out to the Florida CFO regarding any problems. But if you have an attorney, they probably already 
know to make that contact going forward is, with the insurance company? Okay. Okay. Give us just a moment. What you guys are thinking about is um, D12, possibly, committing fraud. What, what number did you say? 1837 D12. D12. Mm -hmm. And there is one that causes harm or does not cause harm. So it would be D12B. It's committing fraud or deceit in the practice of contracting, causing monetary or other harm um, to licensee's customer or physical harm to any person. So D12B. Um, the safety hazard is, the, the verbiage safety hazard is really within <clears throat> contracting beyond the scope of their license where it does or does not create a safety hazard. Um, so the D12B is the actual other harm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the question is, does that apply? This is um, the language in this, based on the testimony that we've already had. Um, D12B is the committing the fraud or deceit in the practice of contracting, causing monetary or other harm to licensee's customer or physical harm to any person. So in this situation, um, there would be additional monetary... I'm sorry. We did cite in the alleged violations already financial harm in Code Section 1837C6. And then gross negligence in 1837C11. Thank y'all. Okay. I'd like to make a no motion cover. to move to disciplinary hearing based on the alleged violations presented and also um, restitution to be determined uh, at prior, prior to that. Second. Motion made and second. Any discussion? Being aye. none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion to move to disciplinary hearing based on the alleged violations presented is approved. And restitution. One more thing before we go, Ms. Perry, have, has your attorney been in touch with the bankruptcy court? Okay. You um, make sure that you get in touch with them. Anyone that's here present today, you need to make sure you reach out to the bankruptcy court, um, the bankruptcy trustee. We have some information available uh, if you contact Jennifer. She or her office, she can uh, she can give you that information that's been provided to us by the bankruptcy court. Okay, thank you. The next um, item is uh, seven ten. Matthew S. Banks State uh, doing business as Banks Construction State Registered License R R two eight two eight one two zero zero one. Complaint number two two zero eight one three four. Betty Harriman, homeowner. 100 Sequenza Drive, Pensacola Beach, Florida, 32561. Ms. Harriman? Ms. Harriman couldn't be here due to okay. medical reasons. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> since Ms. Harriman's not here, we um, are there any other interested um, persons that would be speaking for Ms. Harriman? All right. Um, since we have Melissa Reber here, we would ask that Melissa Reber uh, be sworn as a witness. You saw me swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I swear. Madam Secretary, was notice sent to Defendant uh, Banks? Yes, it was. All right. And did you have any reply from him? No. All right. For the, um, is Mr. Banks in the room? For the record, Mr. Banks is not present. Uh, Ms. Reber, if you could tell the board, um, did you receive a complaint in this case? Yes, I did. All right. And who sent you that complaint? Um, Ms. Harriman. All right. And just to be clear, since um, Ms. Harriman is not available, they will go through some of the details of the documents with you. All right. Thank you. Um, what was the nature of the complaint? Um, sorry. I'm going to read my own notes. 
Um, the nature of the complaint was that uh, banks failed to commence contracted work on the provided start date, failed to obtain permitting for contracted work, and failed to complete contracted work by the projected end date. And the contracting was for um, a renovating of her sunroom and building a porch? That's correct. Uh, Re rebuilding a porch. Rebuilding the porch. Thank you. Are there are contracts required to be pulled for that work? Yes, there was. And were you able to determine from public record if any contracts were, were pulled? I'm sorry, permits were pulled? No permits were pulled. All right. And were you able to review the, con um, you got a copy of the contract from her as well, is that correct? That's correct. And in that um, contract, did it include um, uh, any language about the homeowner recovery fund? No, it did not. All right, do you know how much she actually, um, uh, the, the total of the contract was $36,940. Did she pay a 50% 50, 50 down? She did. On December 21st, 2021, she paid $18,470. And did she pro provide proof of payment? Yes, she did. Were there also communications that she had with Banks Construction? Yes, there was. And did she provide those to you? Yes, she did. Um, did she also provide photographs to you? Yes, she did. And we've got those photographs up on the board. Could you, uh, up on the screen, could you explain to um, the board what we're looking at? This is going to be her sunroom area. Um, basically, Matt demolished the original walls in there and installed um, temporary walls. She, um, in her email communication regarding these photographs, does she tell you um, the condition of the room and any problems she's had since he did this demolition? Yes, um, she said that the room is leaking when it rains and uh, black mold has begun to grow in there. And if we can look at the next picture. Um, she states, is this the dehumidifier that she's put in the room? Or, no, I'm sorry, it's the next picture. That's the dehumidifier that she's put into the room? That's correct. To try to control the mold? Yes. She also provided a document to show that she has, she's been included in the bankruptcy court filings? That's correct. And were, all the doc were those all the documents and documentation she provided to that you? That is correct. All right. How much of the work was actually completed based on her statements to you? Uh, Mr. Banks, around April 20th of 2022, demolished the front porch and no additional work was done until May 9, 2022, when he came to demolish the sunroom walls. And uh, May 15th, 2022, he installed some temporary walls in the sunroom. According to her communications with Matt Banks, um, she reached out to him regarding the lack of work that was being done. That's correct. She gave him a June, uh, that was um, June 8th when she reached out to him and he said he would let her know something by June 13th. Yeah, he told her that he was uh, regrouping his team and would have a plan for her by June 13th and right. let her know when the project would resume. And she also sent him a certified letter, correct? She did. Did she ever have any um, success at having him come out and complete anything after that? No, he did not. Okay. Um, the demand letter that she sent out to him was sent on July 1st, 2022. Mm -hmm. That's correct. And in that demand letter, she asked for um, a d refund on her deposit of $18,470 minus her cost of, uh, of any, the minimal amount of work that he had completed. Correct. And did she provide that number to you? She did not. She, okay. I think she left it up to him to give her that itemization. 
And board, for the record, if we could, where the letter is before you, um, and if we can move all these items into evidence that we've been discussing, and then we'll talk more about the content of the certified letter she sent to him. And make a motion to submit these items into evidence. Motion made. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Is ended discussion. Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none. Motion to add all the documentation as evidence in this case is approved. Um, if you um, look on your screens, you'll see that the certified letter she sent to the defendant was sent on July 1st of 2022. Um, and in that, she stated the only work that had been performed is installation of the under cabinet lighting, demolition of the concrete pad on the existing porch, removal of the concrete porch debris, removal of the existing walls of the sunroom, installation of temporary walls, and installation of moisture wrap. She, is, she was seeking restitution from him, but she didn't have a calculation beyond what she had already given him as a down payment of $18,470. We may have to reach out to her and get additional information regarding restitution uh, but that would be the beginning figure that may be adjusted. There's no one here from, uh, Mr. Banks isn't here to give us any information to assist us on the value of that work. Um, so we would um, turn to the allegations that Ms. Reber listed in her investigative report. Ms. Reber, based on the information that was provided to you, were you able to uh, determine um, if there should be any violations alleged? Yes, I was. And what were those violations? 1837C7, termination of a construction project in which the contractor is engaged or under contract to shall be considered to have been abandoned after 90 days if the contractor terminates said project without notification to the respective owner and without just cause for such abandonment. Code section 1837C11, finding that a contractor is guilty of fraud or deceit or gross negligence, incompetency, or misconduct in the practice of contracting. Florida Statute 489-126-2A1, apply for permits necessary to do work within 30 days after the date payment is made, except where the work does not require a permit under the applicable codes and ordinances. Code section 1837D9J, failure to notify residential property owner of recovery fund, Florida statute 489-126-2A as amended. To be clear, Ms. Reber, she um, gave him a deposit of on December 21st of 2021 of $18,470, and you reviewed the permitting history. That's correct. Was any permit ever pulled? Uh, there was no permit. And this was the type of work that required a permit? Yes. In your review of the contract, was there a, any paragraph regarding the homeowner recovery fund? There was not. Okay. Is there any information that we need to present to the board that you're aware of? No, nothing new. My last conversations with Ms. Harriman is she obviously has to get this work done. And so I'm assuming that's when her restitution will come in. All right. So if we could, um, we would turn the case over to the board we, um, uh, for their findings as to whether or not there should be a disciplinary hearing. We would ask that restitution be ordered and that calculation be uh, introduced at a later time. Make a motion to move to disciplinary hearing based on allegations mm -hmm. presented and uh, restitution be paid based on determined amount at the uh, disciplinary hearing. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion to send the disciplinary hearing based on the allegations presented and the restitution to be calculated is approved. Thank you. There are no other um, hearings before the board today. So, Mr. Chairman, if we can circle back because these hearings will need to go to a disciplinary hearing. Can I ask on a, a question of the staff? Can yes. those hearings be made in the late afternoon or something outside of? You guys can determine the date and time. If, if the morning does not work, we can definitely shift it to the afternoon. Um, I believe 
Tim, did you want to weigh in on that? Or the two dates I posed before the board were October 21st and October 24th. Those are a Friday and a Monday when this room would be available. So if it needs to be in the evening, that is fine. You, you guys give me guidance. <laughs> I personally can't meet the obligation um, that frequently with my business. That, yeah, that's what I was trying to see if there's a way that we could accommodate this quick burst um, after business hours or more where you can complete business. Well, we had the spreadsheet up earlier, and uh, it looks to me like there's going to be a long, quick burst. Right. <laughs> not, not, not four weeks worth, but more like 12. So... Just for confirmation, each of these cases that come before you for probable cause and have to move to disciplinary, um, that has to be done at a hearing. Um, it has been requested that we expedite this for, for the homeowners. Um, just to recap, we have 13 cases for disciplinary hearing on October 5th. We have 10, I believe it's 10, that's coming on October 11th. On those two dates, we also have 10 and I think another 10 coming for probable cause. So you're going to be hearing upwards of 23 and 20 cases on those two dates. Today you had an additional 10 for probable cause. Those will need to come to disciplinary hearing. The probable cause hearings on October 5th and October 11th, if you should choose for those to proceed disciplinary hearing, those will have to be scheduled for a future date date as well. We also, not listed on this spreadsheet, 19 additional cases. Like I said, it's going to be extended. I think you got, a, I think you got an impossible task. <laughs> Please be advised that these all have notices that have to go out within a specified time frame, and we've been working. I, I understand. <laughs> yeah, I understand, too. Excuse me, Jared. Um, we have nine members who are supposed to have a nine member board and you know hardships of, for attendance they were counted by having enough members to cover the uh agendas and you know that's i can't make all of them that doesn't mean i can't make some of them i don't know how to get around that <laughs> is is would the room be available for uh the afternoon of friday the 28th friday the 28th and what time o'clock let me check real quick um, to see if the room is available October 28th just so the board is aware we anticipate um, we know that on the I think on the next agenda is when the um, new applicants will be on the next agenda before the board on October 6th so we may have an additional person by um, by the next right after the next hearing dates so their first hearing date would be November um, if they are decided on October 6th that you will have an additional member coming on in November. Um, as we know, Mr. Downs is no longer with this board and that advertisement should be closing within the next week or so. And then that will also go to the BCC for approval um, based on whoever applies for that position. But their first hearing date would not be until December because of the timing of whenever it has to get on a recommendation, get approved by the BCC. So that's upcoming. So there may be, what I was pointing out is there may be some relief um, on the horizon within November's meeting if we need to push it out into November. I also wanted to make the board aware, the reason why we adopted this new procedure um, and moving everything into evidence, it will allow us to have the board basically take uh, notice of the evidence that we've already moved in so it should expedite the disciplinary proceeding evidence that has to come in because we don't have to go through all this again. It's already in the record before the board and you can take notice of the uh, evidence that you've already received. So it would move pretty quickly through the disciplinary hearings, right, I you. would anticipate. Mr. Mr. Chair, I have a question. Is there like a Monday or Tuesday evening available? For is, or are we just, are we kind of blocked into eight to five type thing? Is there evening? We can have it at night. That's what I was thinking, maybe a Monday or Tuesday. Just a suggestion. Staff is all. What's your calendar? We so, need the October 28th, it was a Friday. That's what you posed, Mr. Bell. That's the first. The room is available all day. 
Um, you give me a time frame. If you do it on October 28th, there's a slim possibility, depending on notice times, that we could also group in the October 5th probable cause notices as well. So that would make you hopefully getting a lot of these through for disciplinary hearing. It puts... Okay, but October the 28th would be the first of the additional meetings? You have one already scheduled on October 11th. 11th? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we have the October 5th and October 11th, and, and so then we would look We're be proposing the 28th. Yes, sir. And then you would circle back and be, again, the normal regularly scheduled on November... First one is in November. November the 2nd. So, yeah, so you'd be having a meeting on the 28th and then again the 2nd. I can do that. I'm just out of town the, uh, the, for the prior dates. I'm out of town. I don't get back until that Wednesday. So I was trying to say if, if it's a, something more convenient in the evening or end of the week or something, we could try to knock these out. I'm, I'm I would like to suggest, thank you. I would like to suggest maybe we make the second an all day event with a break for lunch. And we'll just put in as many. The uh, second. Mm -hmm. and we'll just put in as many of these hearings that we can get in that day as I explained the disciplinary hearings. Um, hopefully we'll move faster because we've already moved all the evidence in. Um, so we might be able to, um, we could put a lot in on the second and we will have a new, if the board approves, we'll have a new member on the second. Okay. So if someone cannot be there, if we have an you illness, we may have coverage. But the, I can be at the break. I'm good with the all day event on the second if that's heavy. The, Option on the board. Is that, is okay. that November 2nd? Yes, sir. Thank you. All day for November the 2nd. November 2nd is one of your regularly scheduled calendar meeting dates. I agree. So do you go out the evenings? It'll be, it'll, be it'll start at 9 o'clock and go till we're done. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, yes. I know that there's a, there is a rule for attendance these these board meetings and you miss so many how many jennifer is it three un, three unexcused but you know three that's, unexcused or five out of 12. And those and those rules are based on normal meetings you know once a month and it doesn't seem fair to me that if someone misses because we have you know expedited yeah. these cases and we're having more meetings is there maybe to the county attorney is there some way of waiving that temporarily because people have businesses that they have to run their business and you know I just don't I can't imagine requiring someone or, or holding them to those same standards with this it, many meetings it's an out of ordinary issue absolutely you better bring it up it's in the code and maybe we can just get back with the board but I just wanted to bring that up um, and, and I do I, I want to make a short statement at the end of the meeting mr. chairman if you don't mind Okay, uh, I will say, I think you can, the chairman can give an excuse. It, for does, it does reference an excused absence. Okay, an excuse. We can make them excused absences. So it's, the chairman has that authority. So I don't think that issue would really be an issue if I just say, okay, you're excused. If you can't be here, you're excused. But it's not to go play football or anything like that, you know. So are we in agreement that November 2nd will be an all-day event? Yes. Okay. And I'm assuming you may not have to stay for all day. If you if you got to leave, you may have to leave. You we just leave. need a quorum. We just as long as we maintain a quorum. Let's go. So the 28th is out, but we're going to do an all day on the 2nd. Okay, that sounds good. All right. Any other comments? Mr. Chairman, do you, want, do, do you want to have that on record? Absolutely. Okay, sure. I just want to, I just want to tell the board how much I appreciate your sacrifices, especially lately. Uh, you've been, you've been hammered pretty hard um, and it was perfect timing with you know 
Randy's got a, he's got a business he's he's trying to run and um, uh, most of you do. And yeah, and Irwin, I mean it's it's just and it's it's not fair to to you, your families, and you're held to this high standard in your volunteers. And I just want to tell you how much I appreciate you serving on this board. It's no fun right now. And but it's you 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 know it's public service that you're you're providing and and you know that I just wanted to say that you know this board a lot of people were, wouldn't even wear this board until a few months ago and you're getting all the attention now and you get hammered pretty good and all you've done is go by the protocol put in front of you you know you can rule on what's in front of you at the time it's in front of you. You have no other control of that. And I, again, I just want to tell you how much I appreciate every one of y'all, your sacrifices uh, for public service, for whatever it's worth. I know it's just for me, but I think a lot of people do appreciate it. They're just not vocal as the, the people complaining. That's all I had to say. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. I would like to make a uh, observation. Having been on this uh, board for 12 plus years, this is the worst situation we have ever faced in the Escambia County. A contractor could be two, but a contractor just deliberately, deliberately doing this kind of work, lack of work, but taking money and running with it. It's just unheard of. Is it a sign of our times? I don't know, but it don't look good right now. I mean, as long as we continue to have to deal with this one person. And I do appreciate the board too, and I appreciate the staff because we couldn't do it without you guys. Well, the difference is we get paid. Well, yeah. you can give us a little if you want to on the side. I, so, I feel like I should actually. Well, thank you, Tim. Anybody else have anything? Motion to adjourn. We're adjourned.